Hey there, it's Bobby Legs, and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And today I will be doing a subscriber watch collection review. Uh, you know, typically, uh, lately I've been doing these via a live stream where I sit down with the enthusiast or subscriber and we go through their collection and we invite uh, questions and comments from the chat and we get deep down what the collector was thinking, their process and collecting and whatnot. Now, uh, today's subject is Mr. G and he is a great friend to the channel, subscriber, and uh, but he wants to keep his anonymity and I totally, totally get that. Um, and, uh, you know, Mr. G is a prolific collector, man. He's got uh, watches from whether they be independents, brand names, Japanese, German, whatnot, micro brands, he's got a lot of watches. But we're going to be focusing on his German collection, his sub collection here. Now, before we continue with the review, please remember to like and subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications every time I upload new videos. I love making these videos and I hope you like them too. And if you're interested in having your collection showcased, on my channel, whether it be in this format or in a live stream, please email me. My email address is in the description below. Now, uh, here we have a, a group shot. Now, Mr. G's German collection is, is limited in brands. You have uh, Nomos, uh, Zinn, and uh, Jaeger, and Benzinger. Uh, and by when I say limited, I just mean like the, the numbers are, you know, he has three different brands here. That doesn't mean that. Um, he has limited taste, of course. Uh, I'm sure his German watch collection will, will grow in time, but this is what we have so far. So I just wanted to give you guys a group family shot of some of the watches. The, the Benzinger, the Jaeger Benzinger is inbound, so he doesn't have it in, in, in person at the moment. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that one later. So uh, let's begin. Now, before we jump into Mr. G's Nomos uh, part of the collection here, uh, back at the end of 2020, maybe probably the fall of 2020, uh, Watch Buys here in the U.S. and Nomos uh, uh, ended their relationship. Uh, Watch Buys was the uh, authorized dealer here in the U.S. for, for Nomos watches or, or one of them or maybe the one. I'm not really sure. Um, but they liquidated, or they, they ended their relationship and they had this incredible sale. They were liquidating, liquidating their, their current stock of Nomos and deals were, were, were done and made and, and they were awesome. And, you know, a lot of these deals were better than buying a Nomos secondhand that was a few years old. I mean, that's how great the deals were, I thought. And so I dropped the ball on this. Uh, I, um, I was at the time I was, uh, you know, um, downsizing my collection. Uh, I, was, I had Rolex on the mind and I wanted to get uh, a Datejust or, or, or a sub. Um, so I, I was tempted, but I, I stood my ground. And unfortunately, I never got that Rolex or that Datejust or sub. I, I moved on, and uh, but I missed out on this incredible sale. And uh, I think Mr. G, he, he took advantage of that and he got a couple of these watches um, from that sale. So, so good for him and, and good for anyone who was able to, to make a score. So let's, uh, get on with it. Um, the first one here is the, uh, no most, the club automatic seven, five, three. Now this watch, um, is, uh, discontinued, but there's other ones that are very similar, uh, with different, uh, dot colors. The, the club line is huge. They have 36 millimeter, 38 millimeter, 40 millimeter case diameters, uh, manual, uh, movements, uh, automatic movements. So you do have a huge choice. Now, before I even get started, you know, the club uh, for some reason gets this rap. And I think it's because a couple of YouTubers had said this and now people are taking it as fact or whatever, that, um, that it's a young person's kind of watch. Like it's, it's juvenile. It's something that you give someone when they graduate high school or college, or when they're getting, uh, when they're starting off of the workforce, that this is like, you know, not like a serious, uh, watch. And, and I don't get that. I totally disagree. Yes, this watch does not look typical of the styling of Nomos. It, it, I don't see or feel like it screams Bauhaus. And yes, it is definitely more sportier than a lot of their other models. But this is a fun watch. And I think, you know, look, I'm 48 years old. And when I, you know, jump into the Nomos pool and get my first Nomos, like this may be what the, the club is getting some serious consideration. Um, just because like, I'm not a hundred percent 
um, into the Bauhaus look. Uh, some days I like it, some days I don't. So I better just maybe just take my time with that. Um, but the club is definitely uh, a, a, a strong candidate for for my first Nomos watch. Uh, this one here has a 40 millimeter case diameter. It's just under 10 millimeters case thickness. Uh, just a frame of reference, Mr. G has a seven inch wrist. 100 meter water resistant. It's got the in-house Epsilon movement. Uh, power reserve around 43 hours. Just a really sweet watch. I, I, I think it's fun. I think it's casual. Um, it, it's almost like a daily wear. I know it's looks like it's got a lot of polishing there, so it, it may scratch up a little bit um, or show those uh, scratches, but who cares? We wear our watches. Um, the thickness of the bezel um, is just right, I feel. I, I like a, I like to see a little bezel in, in on my watches, um, at least, you know, if it's not like a dive watch, if it's something like this that, that has no uh, rotating timing bezel. Um, but uh, I really, really like this watch. Uh, definitely all, a lot of different dial com, um, combinations as well, as well as our uh, number of combinations. That they, they have like a California dial. They have, you know, so um, very robust line in a, in a Nomos uh, collection. And um, I really enjoy it. Uh, so moving on, we have the uh, Autobahn Neomatic 41 Date Sports Gray. And this is another interesting watch, the reference number 1303. Uh, 41 millimeter case diameter, uh, just over 10 millimeters uh, thick, 100 meter water reserve, um, water resistance, and it has an in-house built uh, caliber, the 6101. Now, what I like about this watch, I like the date. Uh, at the six o'clock, you know, that it's big. And then you can see, the, you can see the day before and the day after, which is, which I think is fun and different. Um, of course, uh, it could be problematic if you're on the 28th of February, 29th of February, or if you're on a month with 30, you get to see that date that doesn't really exist uh, coming ahead. Um, but whatever, maybe it's just a reminder if you want to look at it positively that you have to change uh, the date. But super fun, different um, kind of like dial. You have that uh, blue uh, three-quarter ring uh, within the dial there, um, just underneath the hour markers. Uh, nice splash of orange with the small seconds. And then the receded uh, register there uh, in, in the small seconds. So you do have some depth of dial here. And uh, the orange hand and the orange, uh, I think that's the, uh, the minute hand there or the hour hand. And then the orange tip on the minute hand. So really nice, fun watch. Like I said, 41 millimeter case hour, but no no bezel really to, to speak of. So this is going to wear, this is going to be like a big 41 millimeter. Um, so anyway, and you have these wired lugs kind of over there. So I think that's one of the things that turns me off a little bit about Nomos is these wired lugs. They, they, they're long. So I think it works for a guy with uh, like Mr. G who has a, a seven inch wrist and somebody who has a bigger wrist. But when you get to like six and a half and, and, and under those wired lugs, really add length to that lug to lug with. And, um, and so it might be problematic for some people, uh, aesthetically anyway, uh, moving on, we have the Ahoy Atlantic datum, uh, reference number five, five, three. Now this is another watch that's in heavy contention for me. When I jump into the Nomos pool, I just like the lines. I, I, I like how, um, the, um, crown guards seem to be seamlessly coming out of the case like around and i know there's like a little gap in there when the uh the lugs and the i mean the the crown guard and the case meet but it just feels like it's a natural progression and it just meets up nicely with the crown so aesthetically it hits the right spot for me um so this is also a 40 millimeter case diameter just slightly above uh, 10 and a half millimeter um, thick watch, 200 meter water reserve, which is nice. So you could, you know, take this uh, swimming for sure and not have, not have to worry about it. It's got a DUW5001 automatic movement. Um, it's, um, it has the first, it was the first Nomos with the automatic uh, uh, caliber, uh, in-house uh, caliber. So a 43 hour uh, power reserve, just a really cool watch. I know it has those wiry type lugs that I just talked about <laughs> with the um, Audubon Neomatic, but you know, man, I, maybe I can make an exception here for sure. Very good looking watch. Moving on to the Metro Date Power Reserve 1101. Very, very Nomos style watch, right? I mean, definitely, you know, you have a Nomos here. Now it's on the smaller side for Mr. Uh, G with his Nomos watches. It's just under, it's at 37 millimeter case diameter and it's a very thin 
seven point uh, seven millimeters thick, thirty millimeter water uh, water reserve um, water resistance. I get the hand wound forty four hundred one movement, forty two hour power reserve, and right underneath. The 12 o'clock, sitting between 12 and 1, is the power reserve indicator. And when it shows up red like that, um, you know that uh, you're, you're you're reaching almost the end of your, your power reserve. So when you wind it, that teal disc kind of moves around, uh, and then that uh, red part there um, kind of disappears. And that's when you know you have a full uh, charge. Uh, small second hand uh, at the 6 o'clock position right above the date window at the six o'clock. Uh, you don't, I don't really see that often, right? I mean, I know we've seen it with a couple of the watches here with Nomos where they stick that um, uh, seconds uh, register, small seconds, right above the date at the six o'clock. It doesn't, even though this is a small watch, it doesn't feel um, like it's too much for me. Like I, it, it actually kind of works. And I'm sure in person that small second is really, really small, um, but uh, very, very nice uh, dress piece. Um, I like this one too. Um, finally, wow, the this is this is probably this has got to be the favorite, right? Um, the price is a little much, though, maybe a little bit out of my range at the moment. But the the Zurich World Time Midnight Blue, this is a fantastic watch. I love this one. Um, just under forty millimeter case diameter. Just under 11 millimeters case thickness. It's a 5201 automatic movement. It's got a 42-hour power reserve. It's it's got the world time, right? It's got the the 24-hour display um, wheel there at the three o'clock. Um, you know, depth of dial with the cutouts there. Uh, just a really fun, fun world time watch, man. This is oh, I love this watch. Um, it. Okay, I mean, I know I really geeked out on the club, right? And it will be most likely the one I get when I buy my first Nomos. But if uh, if if the wallet didn't have any limitations, um, I would get uh, this one here. And I love the Midnight Blue. The white is actually really nice as well. But there's something about this Midnight Blue, you know, I really, really like. Uh, I probably wouldn't travel with... The only watch that I would travel with that was sort of a world time or gmt kind of functionality for me and, and you guys it's probably no surprise to you it would be the zen 856 i mean i think that watch um is so under the radar um you know uh that uh that i i i, I would have i would travel the world with that watch and, and and not worry about it plus it's tough i'm sure this watch is tough too and and i'm sure i probably would take this watch let's be honest i would take this watch if i was traveling but um but it's great when you're not traveling, right? So if you have people that you know and love in other parts of the world, um, you can basically figure out very, very quickly, you know, uh, what time it is in that area. So you don't call them in the middle of the night or send them a drunk text. Or maybe you do send them a drunk text. Who cares? Anyway, I love this watch. Um, and this will wrap it up with the Nomos part of the collection. So now we're at the... Zin portion of Mr. G's German watch collection. And I've made no bones about it in the past. I love Zin. I have owned several. I own several now. I will own more eventually. Uh, I just love the purpose, the tooliness of the brand. And I believe Mr. G feels the same way. Now pictured here uh, is all the watches in his collection. Uh, minus the 903, the 903 is no longer in his collection. I will also be skipping over discussing the EZ M3, um, which is a great dive watch, but focusing more on the EZ M13, which is the chrono version pretty much of the EZ M3. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first off, we have the Zin 140 ST Space Chronograph. Now, I love this watch. It is a Zin classic. It just looks like it belongs in outer space. Um, this watch actually did make it into outer space back in 1985 with the Lemania based 5100, proving that, you know, this watch can, um, you know, go up in space and, 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 um, and work, you know, in zero gravity. It has a tegumented case, so great technology, as well as the ARD humidifying technology, 44 millimeter case diameter, 15 millimeters thick, just a super looking watch. I love it on strap here. Uh, I love how that orange chronosecond um, 
pops and it, and it has the uh, the wings of a plane on it. Just so very, very cool. You got the date at the three o'clock window. Uh, these EZMs, man, they're, they're just, I'm, I'm sorry, this uh, 140 is just so tough and, and rugged. It's just, what a great watch. And if you have a, a bigger wrist size, um, you know, you can definitely pull this off. Smaller wrist size, even so, because you don't really have much of a, a lug to lug situation here. It's it's not going to be much more than the case diameter. So it's a great watch uh, for all sizes. Uh, moving next to the Easy M13. This may be my favorite watch in Mr. G's uh, Zen collection. I love this watch. And like I mentioned earlier, based on the EZM3, but uh, pretty much a chrono version. And you'll notice that the the pushers in the crown are on the left-hand side. There's purpose in that. Uh, these um, uh, watches were built for uh, emergency responders. And so, uh, you know, uh, they're this the chrono is on the left hand side the buttons and the crown uh just not to interfere with any kind of equipment handling uh on the hand uh for for the for the user um now this watch has got a 500 meter water resistance a unidirectional bezel it's 41 millimeters case diameter 15 millimeters uh thickness uh bead blasted air ar dehumidifying technology just a tactical looking watch uh, it's got a modified Valjoux 7750. Just an awesome watch. Like I said, one of my favorites. It's discontinued, actually, now, too. But it's one of my favorites in the collection. And uh, I, would love, I would love to pick up this watch one day. This may be the next Zen, if I can swing it for sure. Uh, moving along, we have the Zen Military Type 4 Limited Edition. And as you guessed it, there was a Type 1, a Type 2, and a Type 3. There was a whole military uh, series. You have a case diameter 41 millimeters, 15 and a half millimeters case thickness, 200 meter water resistance, bi-directional friction-based uh, bezel. Based on some uh, designs from the past, uh, the 103 with the acrylic case, um, this Zen military looking uh, uh, watch in, in the military series is uh, really kind of a throwback uh, to some of the older uh, original Zen uh, chronographs from back in the day. Uh, love how the crystal uh, at the edge of the dial plays with the uh, the view, the, the numbers and how they look. Um, everything's on the left-hand side, even the day and the date. Uh, so if you notice that uh, as well, um, as with the uh, pushers in the crown. So just a really cool looking watch. This is also, like I said, a limited edition, I believe, um, you still might be able to pick up one of these, um, in watchbuys.com, uh, but probably not for too long. Okay. Going on next, the Zen U50 SDR. I have a U50, um, not the SDR version. This is the Tegaments version. Sorry. I left out the T here. Um, uh, but great, great watch. I, it's basically, I basically have the same watch. The only difference is that you have a black, um, coated bezel here. Um, as, as opposed to the, the stainless steel, quote unquote, um, bezel on the regular U50 Tegamented, uh, Tegamented case bezel and, and the bracelet, just a tough watch, but it fits so great on wrist. It's a 41 millimeter case. I am 11.2 millimeter case thickness, 500 meter water resistance. I love this watch, man. <laughs> oh man. You probably uh, guys are, are going to be sick of, of uh, or already sick of me here, uh, hearing, uh, talking about me, uh, about the U50, but, uh, you know, um, uh, originally the, when the U1, uh, when I first saw the U1, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like these block hands, these Lego style hands, uh, on the watch, but uh, eventually uh, I came around and, um, and still the sizing, even though it fit me. Okay. Uh, I wish they had made a smaller size and sure enough, uh, Zen, uh, you know, heard their, the pleas of the masses and they came up with a shorter version and it's, been, it's been a great seller for them. I mean, uh, now you still have to wait a few months before you can get one of these after you order it. Um, so they, they can't keep up with demand. Uh, great, great watch, uh, highly recommended. Um, you know, if you're got a wrist size of, you know, six and a half, uh, all the way up to, to seven and a quarter. At that point, maybe you can go, you know, U1 because of the bigger dimensions, but such a great watch. Um, one of my favorites of all time. 
um, in my collection now and will always be in my collection. Uh, and finally, let's go into the Jaeger and Benziger. I, I have black rhodium here. I, it's This is the picture of the rhodium. Uh, I, I, I made a mistake there. He's getting the rhodium with a rose gold dial. So please ignore the um, the black uh, description there. Uh, Jaeger and Benziger, one of my favorite independent uh, German watchmaking brands. Uh, I've actually tried on this watch uh, uh, before. Not, not this color um, combination but the, the same watch practically um, and at a watch buys roadshow a couple years ago. Now, I, again, I have six and three quarter inch wrists. The lug to lug on these are, is around 52. So it was kind of pushing it um, with the big dial, uh, the 42 millimeter uh, case dial. Um, and, uh, and it's all dial, right? Because there's barely any bezel on there. So um, while I think I could pull off a dive watch, um, with a 52 millimeter lug to lug, this was just a little bit overpowering for my wrist. Um, but you know, your mileage might vary. I mean, you may have the same wrist size uh, as I do and it, that wouldn't bother you. Uh, but this is a great watch. Benzinger, um, a master at the hand guilloche, which you can see there in the small seconds, uh, that, uh, um, rose gold plated a small seconds with the, with the, uh, uh, guilloche at the back <laughs> exhibition, uh, case back, beautiful looking movement. I believe it's a 6498 ETA, but it has a three quarter inch plate with hand guilloche using a sun ray, um, ray pattern and it's finished hand engraving. Uh, it's rose gold, um, blued screws, uh, perlage on the base plate. Uh, the balance cock is engraved and finished with rhodium. Just a great looking watch. Uh, I'm so happy that um, Mr. G is picking this up because this is a great watch. I have I have a smaller a Jaeger and Benzinger, a 38 and a half millimeter one uh, case diameter. It looks a little bit more like a, a, something you would see coming out of uh, Breguet uh, than, than this one here. Uh, this is much bigger, um, but uh, still nonetheless, great, great watch. And uh, an awesome German watch collection. I really thank. I want to thank Mr. G for for allowing me to to present this to you. Um, and uh, and I hope he continues picking up more German watches. And I hope you guys, um, you know, give German watches a chance if you haven't already, because you can find some great great value on some of these watches, and they're beautiful, beautifully done. Anyway, guys, thank you for hanging in there and watching this. Um, review of the collection and I will see you guys in the next video.